Afternoon. It's your boy DJ Anonymous, and uh, today we're doing something a little different. We've uh, just purchased a couple of the Electro Voice 18 active speakers, the ETX uh, 18 SPs, I believe. <sighs> Bingo. Yeah, pretty freaking sweet speakers. I got to admit, looking at the reviews online, and after running 21-inch drivers, dual 21s at our events, I was a little. Uh, my expectations were a little bit higher than they should have been, and. Basically, I was looking for something to complement the mobile PA setup, moving from some general Rockvilles and things like that, make it a little bit easier to do weddings, school dances, you know, whatever. And uh, so I bought these guys, brand new from the factory, and to complement the uh, ZLX 15Ps up top, fastened with bungee cords, but um, don't worry, it's safe with the pole. Anywho, so last night, got them in, unboxed them, freaking pretty sweet boxes. Uh, using a knife and a box cutter, it was still even a challenge to get those things open. But anyways, played some music, hooked them up, noticed that they draw a lot of power. Uh, we have LED lights here, we have 15 dedicated amp breakers on either side of the garage, and... Yeah, the lights were flickering more so than they did with the 3,000-watt rock fills, and they took 3,000 watts, so I was a little concerned what was really going on. So after some uh, tests and tuning, I realized something's still not right, and uh, they really didn't live up to the expectations, um, at least from what I saw online, and obviously in regards to the QSCs and competition with the, was it the 181s. Um, anywho... Being that these have the built-in DSPs and uh, the functionality to match some of the other components, like if you get the ETX 15s, etc., um, that's kind of nice. It's a good selling point. The stackable side, uh, the cardioid configuration and such, I mean, it's pretty freaking sweet. It's got two, um, what I believe is parallel XLR interfaces for in and outs. You can pretty much run the whole setup through it. Um, I mean, overall, pretty good. Definitely a solid cabinet. The pole cups are, are pretty good. They got the threaded inserts too, which I'm going to move forward with. The uh, handles are definitely pretty rugged. They feel a little bit more sturdy and a lot better than the, the cut out of the wood type fashion handles. And, you know, definitely just overall pretty good design. I was a little concerned. There's only about three, there's three screws on either side for the grills. And, uh, you know, with the amount of flex and base that I intend on putting through these, you know, last thing you want to hear is rattling at a gig and or for anything to fall off or something like that and um it does the trick right now i'm definitely gonna upgrade and probably move them through uh nut and bolt just to make sure i can avoid um any unexpected turns of fence and um but here's the here's what it comes down to so i definitely needed more base right i heard it and i'm like oh, this is good but uh, it's not good enough what can we do uh, with a low budget and really get the maximum amount of bass out of these cabinets comfortably, right? The amplifiers I heard were really good in terms of all the tests they performed, and I heard the drivers were really kind of chintzy, and they are. I mean, let's take a look. So these are the drivers, and uh, they, they look shiny in appearance, and that distracts you from the point that, I mean, look at this motor structure, the, you know, the kind of chintzy cast here and the little rough edges. Overall, not impressed. These drivers new right now in 2019 are about 150 bucks for a brand new one shipped. And uh, yeah, I think that these cabinets deserve something a little better. So to keep the cost point down on these, I believe the only thing they've really uh, cut back on was the drivers. So what I had the thought of doing is I have these Sirwin Vega LP36 folded horns. I rebuilt and put in some seismic audio new Madrid 18s in which have 240 ounce double stack magnets and just all sorts of awesome stuff. One of the best budget subwoofers I have ever honestly got to work with, probably out of at least 50 different drivers in PA for 18s and just for ferrite, at least from the ferrite market, but unbelievable. Just, it just eats what, Ever you can throw at it. It's got a four inch voice coil. I mean, you can back, you can practically stand on the sub and not move the cone. It's that firm. Uh, the vents on it, fantastic. I mean, just everything about it is amazing. <laughs> I know I'm not a salesman for seismic audio, but I gotta tell you, these things are for the price point. I'm um, just unbeatable. Don't even try. Just get them, eat them while you can. So, nonetheless, I put them in here.
dropped right in, literally to the T, barely fit in because the outside of the cast is a little bit larger than most traditional 18 subs to accommodate the weight. Um, furthermore, the mounting holes are a little bit offset. I don't know what the hell happened at the factory, but the, they're, they're basically just, I would say about a millimeter off. And then after all 18 holes, it doesn't fit. Like it just doesn't line up. Like when you get an aftermarket cheap exhaust and you're like, oh shit, I have to drill the holes to make it happen. Everyone's already, everyone who's done it a few times already knows what to expect. Like it's going to be a long night to get them to fit. So I've done that originally with the Cerrone Vegas here. Lots of drilling, make sure to do it properly, come up with some way to like kind of, I made custom washers here. I mean, pretty simple design, but you can get the idea just to make sure that the subs fully fastened to the cabinet properly because really rattling uh, -uh not happening not in my rigs so um and also some lock washes too for longevity but anyways put those in and literally literally night and day difference i mean fantastic um they seem to be consuming less power which means which leads me to believe i'm throwing less volume at it <laughs> the inputs the levels seem pretty precise um, i was a little concerned that i heard that these things like to go into a protection mode a little bit sooner than later over time and i've been running these right now for five hours at a very considerable amount of volume but nonetheless ever since i popped in these new drivers i'm getting at least i would like to say maybe 20 percent more volume out of these and much lower frequency response these drivers are terrible under 140 hertz i don't it just doesn't exist and uh, they just, they're consuming power, they're eating it, but they're not, they're not producing. And so I have to say, if you really want to get the most out of these, hands down, replace the drivers with whatever you want. If you want to go neodymium uh, to kind of, you know, offset the, the weight, you know, uh, if you're doing this, you're doing everything portable. Me, I still got a few years left in me to be young and carry these things around. So I'm definitely going to put in the ferret magnets because, you know, more cost effective. But at the end of the day, upgrade the subs, you're going to be way happier way happier i mean literally i can't believe that these things are still in competition the qscs with the drivers that they're providing i think they intended us you know us to know that and to replace and upgrade it so um don't want to have too much of a lengthy video here i'm going to play something obviously on a phone microphone uh, the note 8 it's not going to be too good but i'll play something at least right and no i don't own rights to this music or whatever the heck it is some uh, bass house. That was cage with a K vibrate just in case you're curious, but uh, yeah, so do I recommend these? Yes I also recommend get the best deal and bargain out there if you can get a set of these with the drivers gone do it Get them get the boxes get the amp amps seem to be fantastic Put a better driver in there stack them use a DSP have some fun crank it up and uh, the ZLX 15 P's are definitely very comparable to the ETX 15s because um, I mean just from the volume that I've been working with and they just it's spot on. So, I mean, if you want to save yourself a few hundred dollars there, ZLX is doing great. They've been through more abuse than 
what I'd like to admit to <laughs> over the years and held up just fine. So um, that's my review. Uh, I'd rather put something out there because I haven't really seen too much and there's been some gaps in where I could, I'm always one out to improve things. Um, I, it's just my nature. So anyways, definitely buy them. Otherwise, if you're a QSC guy and you want to stick to QSC, stick with them and uh, we'll check in later. Thank you for watching.